This is a faculty tutorial on e-learning for Cairn University. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the most commonly used features in e-learning. So to get started, we need to go to elearning.cairn.edu. This is a direct link to the site. e-learning is the learning management system for Cairn University. e-learning contains all the course resources for the duration of the class, and the final grades are posted in self-service. So to get started here, we need to log in on the top right here with your staff account. Once you log in, on the bottom left hand side of the screen, you'll see the courses that have been assigned to you to teach. If the course does not show up in here, then uh, most likely the registrar's office has not assigned you as a teacher to the course. So in this case, we are going to go to the e-learning training course. And this is what we will usually get for a new semester, a blank course or a blank page for every course that you are teaching. So at this point we are going to learn how to update the course heading and also to change a couple of the settings for the completely for the course to start with. Notice by default there are 17 topics in the course. So in order to add more topics or less topics to change that we need to click on turn editing on on the right hand side and the turn editing on allows us to make changes to the course such as adding new content, removing stuff and so on. Now since we want to add or remove uh, sections here or topics we need to click on edit settings, uh, settings for the course itself and then in here we could add a course description. This will show up on the front page for the students. So the course description or a course summary you could copy and paste it from the syllabus or you could just add something very quick. Under the number of weeks or topics, this is, this is what controls the number of topics that show up in that front page. So if you want 48 or 52 of them, you can choose as many as 52. So in our case, let's say we want only 10. You usually choose 17 by default because uh, it lasts for 16 weeks and then one extra. So let's say 10. And then you could change the course start date. It's not really that important, but you could change it if you'd like to and then choose Save Changes. At this point, notice that it will have only 10 topics. So one of the first things to do when starting a new course for a new semester is posting a heading here on the, to specify the course title and contact information and then the course posts the course syllabus. So to do that we need to turn editing on. So keep in mind and anything that you want to modify on the course you need to turn editing on and it's either on the top right or under the settings here. And then we click on the little pencil here. Notice that there are all kinds of little icons that show up after you turn editing on. If you hold the mouse on any of these icons, it will tell you as to what those icons do. So in our case here, we want to edit the summary, the top summary. So click on it. And then we can say... Note that you can format this, very similar to like in Microsoft Word. Specify a different heading for it. Insert pictures or other links and just hold the mouse on any of these icons and customize it from there. And then click on Save Changes. At this time the course heading has been posted and the contact information has been uploaded or posted. You might want to include additional information in there such as uh, information, maybe a link or a video to your favorite site or a video about yourself or an intro or um, a podcast of some sort introducing yourself to the class. At this point we are ready to insert the syllabus. At this time I'm going to show you how to use the drag and drop feature for uploading course resources including the syllabus to e-learning. This was a new enhancement that was just added recently and it is very powerful and it can be used for all types of resources that can be added to a course page. 
so we need to turn editing on where you have all these little icons and then we need to open our file browser as where we have our course files and then the next thing that we need to do is we need to click on the file that we want to drag and drop to the course so all we have to do here is we click on the syllabus in this case it's in PDF and I just hold it down and then drag it to uh, the very top of the course then just let it go and then the syllabus in this point has been posted the same way you could post other resources and other video lectures so we go back to our resources here and let's say we go to under hardware and we drag this PowerPoint over here to the topic number one now if the PowerPoint is pretty large it's gonna take a little time to upload it but that's how easy it is to use the drag and drop feature you can use this for Word documents for PDF files PowerPoints and other types of resources At this point we did upload the course syllabus and the syllabus should be ready for the students to download it if you want to rename the course the wording here for the syllabus you can click on the black pencil here and choose course syllabus and then hit enter otherwise it will not save the name change if you wanted to edit this further you can click on update and then customize other settings that you may prefer to customize another method of uploading a resource to e-learning or the course syllabus to e-learning is doing the manual way or the longer way like we used to do it uh, in the previous versions of e-learning you can click on add an activity or resource then you'd click on add a file under resources click on add then you'll give it a name you can put a description if you'd like to and then post this description on the front page if you choose to and then under content you can either drag the files here or you can click on add and then you can basically add files from a variety of ways you can choose to upload the file from your computer from recent files that you have used or private files that you may have in e-learning uh, the most commonly used option here is upload a file from your computer this is by default what shows up then what you need to do is you'll need to click on choose file and at this point it's very similar to just attaching a file to an email so then we go to wherever you have your files and then pick the syllabus from there and then click on open leave the rest of the options uh, the way they are and then click on upload this file then under the display uh, force download is the most commonly used option however you can choose here open as well automatic it's not really recommended for PDF files sometimes they may not open correctly and then all you have to do is click on save and return to the course note that the syllabus has been posted a second time and then I can click on on it it'll save it you'll be able to open it if you wanted to delete one of those options or one of those instances like we uploaded two of them you can click on the delete icon and that will remove it from the course page so that's how you upload the syllabus to the, to the course and upload other resources using the drag and drop tool adding a course description it's probably good to add also a course description besides what you state on the syllabus in order to make it richer and to add the course description it's uh, very simple basically in one in Microsoft Word you could open your syllabus and then just copy the course description then switch back to e-learning to your e-learning page then click on add an activity then choose a label we want to add just a plain label like a sticker on the course page here click on add and then we can simply paste that course description click on save and return to the course and the description has been posted before we proceed further with e-learning one of the items that I recommend doing in the specific in every course is creating the attendance activity for each course so to create the attendance you click on add an activity or resource and then under activities you choose attendance 
you could just name it attendance or class attendance. The grade, usually there's no grade for attending class. Different instructors may do it differently. You can specify a number of points if you'd prefer. So by default, or usually there's no grade. And then we click on save and display. At this point, we need to add the sessions or the section uh, when the class meets because the system does not figure out as to what days of the week the class is meeting. So we need to click on add. Then we need to choose create multiple sessions. This allows us to create all the sessions for the whole semester in one shot. So we say it starts on September 1st and then the duration it's um, one hour and then it ends on say it ends on December 12th and then we meet on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Under the description you could just put a regular class. Click on add session. It's, uh, the system is going to add all of those sessions for the whole semester. So if we click here under sessions and then click on all it will display all the dates that the class is meeting. Notice it's not the US date format here so this means it's uh, September 3rd 2012. So now if we return to the course which by the way it is by clicking on the title of the course here notice we have the class attendance record. And I'll explain in a little bit how to take attendance. And those are the records for the attendance which basically it is by clicking on this green button here. Taking attendance in e-learning uh, from time to time or every class that you'll meet, uh, it's uh, one of the options is to take attendance using e-learning. And to take attendance, you can just bring up the e-learning course page on the projector and then click on class attendance. And then you pick the specific date that you want to take attendance. So let's say we want to take the attendance for the first day here. You click on the little green button. Unfortunately, it's pretty small at this point and we'll have to figure out to make this larger for everyone. But you click on uh, take attendance, on the green button. Then the best is to mark everybody present in the class and then figure out who is excused, who is late and who is absent. Additionally, you can put remarks for each one of them and then choose save attendance. So the attendance has been taken at this point. If for some reason you need to change the record for a student, you can click on class attendance again from the front page. And now notice that this is uh, linked or this tells us that the attendance has been taken for this day. Notice the green button is missing and you can click on the hyperlinked date here and go and make the appropriate changes for those specific students and then click on save attendance. If one of the dates listed in here is um, let's say fall break or Thanksgiving break or some kind of day that you're not going to meet you can simply delete those specific records that you're not going to take the attendance or just don't take attendance at all for that specific time. Before we proceed any further with our course here, I recommend that the next thing you do is configure the categories for your grade book. It'll make things much easier as we go. So every course, if we open the syllabus, has a specific way of calculating the grades or assessing how students are learning in the course. So for example, in this course, we have quizzes and labs and class labs. They are 25% of the grade. There are two exams, a midterm and a final exam, and those are 25. Then there is an e-portfolio, that's 15%. And then weekly assignments, they are 25%. And then presentation and contribution to the class, that is 10%. could say that these are categories. Each item here, it's a category. And within that category, there are sub-items to it. For example, quizzes, there could be six or seven quizzes. There could be class labs, another seven of them. 
that makes it 13 or 14 items there just for that category so we need to tell the system in the grade book that we are going to have different categories for this course for all the activities assignments quizzes and uh, discussions forums and so on the key is that all these categories add up to a hundred percent so we are going to go to the course in e-learning and then we are going to go under grades this is where we specify the categories click on grades and then we need to click on categories and items under categories and items notice that the default for the course it's weighted mean of grades that is the aggregation if you're not sure as to what these uh, components are you can also click on this blue question mark so we need to leave the default here as weighted mean of grades then we need to click on add category and add all the categories that we are using or working with before so if we know this back here those were the categories quizzes and so on so now let's go back and we choose categories add a category and then the first one will be quizzes and class assignments leave everything the way it is if you want to drop the lowest quiz this is where you can specify to drop the lowest one or the two lowest and so on for the students and then we leave everything alone and then click on save changes so notice we have quizzes and class assignments then we scroll down again we add the next category and we're going to make this exams next category then we choose projects and then another category presentations now under weight the next item here the next thing what we need to do we need to change the weight so that for that specific category so if we look in our syllabus the first one the quizzes and labs that was 25 percent exams let's say 40 percent projects 10 percent presentations 25 percent so all of these should add up to 100 25 65 75 100 under the the aggregation for the subcategories you can choose to have them weighted mean of grades that means that each assignment can be weighed differently however most of the time it's best to just choose simple weighted mean of grades for those sub assignments not the top one just the subcategories so change this to simple weighted mean of grades for all of them and then specify the category weights so unfortunately didn't save the last ones because I didn't click on save changes and then save changes at this point we are done with the configuration of the gradebook the way it works from here on is that when we create an assignment what well, during the process of the creation of the assignment there will be an option as to what category does this assignment fall under and then we just specify let's say it falls under exams and then it will show up directly under the exams option but you don't have to mess with that from here so at this point we return to e-learning and we are set with defining the categories the next step in our course design is to add additional components such as uh, lecture one uh, resources assignments and uh, so on so before we do anything further we are going to modify so instead of topic one we are going to change this so it has the date for that specific session and a description of what we are covering for this week so what it says here use default section name default section name is going to be topic one we're going to check that out and say september 3rd 2012 or 2013 
and then under summary we could include in there what we are going to cover this week you could choose to have this in different colors make it bold and uh, format it differently and then choose save changes and at this time we are ready to post the first lecture so to post the lecture there are a couple ways of doing it is uh, one of the ways is to drag and drop the PowerPoint into the course here like we demonstrated with the syllabus or go the process step by step by using the add a resource so let's use the drag and drop first so while we have the course page open open also your files wherever you have your files then just drag the PowerPoint directly into that day's lecture if you want to edit the title in any way you can click on edit title and then hit enter the lecture at this point has been posted the other way to post the lecture is by clicking on add an activity or resource choose a file click on add give it a descriptive name you can put a description if you choose to if you put a description you can choose to post it also on the front page and then under content click on add to add the files or drag the files here then we can choose to upload the file from the computer or from recent files or private files so in this case I'm going to use from computer then choose a file browse to wherever you have your files and then pick the file that you want to upload click on upload this file and on the display type uh, usually it's best to choose force download or choose open one of the two options here and then click on save and return to the course notice this is the second option the first uh, one was just simply drag and drop this first one here so note uh, the drag and drop it's much easier to use once you have those resources posted you can choose to indent them a different way if you'd prefer to so that's how you post a resource you can post also PDF files if you'd prefer the same way exactly the same way so if we go here under in uh, word format you can simply drag and drop it to the course from time to time you may want to utilize also links to websites or YouTube videos and the reason for that it might be copyright or it could be that uh, the articles cannot be posted directly or uploaded directly into e-learning so in this process I'm going to link a website or an article or a YouTube video to the course page to get started we need to be in the course page we need to have editing turned on where we have these icons and then we need to click on the for example on this specific week we want to click on add an activity then we want to scroll all the way to the bottom and choose URL so we want a link to a website out there then we click on add and let's say I want to link to an article on CNN here on how to follow Olympics online and uh, at this point one of the ways to do this is um, you go to the article let's say this is the uh, article you highlight the URL on the very top copy it and then switch back to e-learning under the external URL option you just right click and choose paste or press ctrl V leave everything the way it is and then choose save and return to course at this time the link has been posted I'm going to indent it a little bit to the right and the students will be able to simply click on the URL and it will take them to that site so you can use this for research articles the same way for library resources so if we go for example to library click on the online databases or the databases option choose one of the databases here search for an article and then make sure you choose the full text so if we click on the full text either PDF or full text web the web version probably is best because it will open in any type of device you copy the URL then return back to e-learning then we choose add an activity URL add 
under the external URL, control V to paste, V like Victor, or right click and choose paste. Choose save and return to the course. And then the student will have access to that resource, even though it is in one of the library databases. If they are off campus, they will be asked for authentication for the library system. So we are linking to a specific resource, uh, to access a specific resource in a protected database. The next option I'll show you here is how to add a YouTube video. There are a couple ways of adding YouTube videos. So for example, if we go to YouTube first, and then under let's say pick any of the videos that you want to display to your students then copy the url on the top control c then go to the course page add an activity choose url add external url paste the link and then you choose save and return to the course you can also use this option here for YouTube videos under external link you could click on choose a link and then click on YouTube videos and you can search for YouTube videos from here so pick any of the videos that you're interested in click on the link choose and there it is YouTube video so if I click on it course this will be the YouTube video the second one that I chose the student will have the option to play it and then rewind it and go back and forth as many times as they need to so that is how you add uh, various different links from YouTube from articles online to uh, journal articles using the library databases When posting resources for the students for a course, you can also add web pages to your course. To add a web page, simply click on Add an Activity, and then choose under Resources, choose Page. Click on Add, and then next we are going to give a name to this page. Now in here we can type, you can leave the description a blank, unless you want to post it on the course front page. And then under the page content, you can type the content of your web page directly from here. Or you can click, so let's say your computer. You can also click on this uh, button on the top right hand side, the toggle full screen mode. This will give you a chance so that you can modify and customize this further. And uh, then from here, Basically, we are typing the whole lecture. So the advantage of a web page is that you're, you don't have to save something in Microsoft Word and then uh, save it and upload it and all that type of thing. You're posting everything directly into an HTML page and it will uh, be opened automatically or it will be easily openable and accessible from any type of device out there. So uh, in here you could basically type all your lecture notes directly online. You, get, uh, you can insert images. And by clicking on the insert picture there, then you can choose wherever your pictures are. Choose upload. And um, you're basically formatting this and posting this directly for the students online. Once you're done with the editing, Notice there are all kinds of different functions here. Click on the toggle full screen. That will bring it down. And then click on save and return to the course. Now notice computer components is posted. And here is our page. Available for the students. Okay, so those were the different types of resources that you can post for the students. Uh, remember also you can do videos. Uh, you can also do podcasts. A podcast, it's uh, exactly the same process as uh, basically you record a sound file on your iPhone or a smartphone device and then save that sound file and post it on eLearning using the process either by dragging and dropping it on the course page 
or by uploading it as an, a file by choosing the file option on the resources here. In this video tutorial, I'm going over the steps on creating a Turnitin assignment in e-learning. This type of assignment allows the instructor to view any plagiarized work in a submitted student paper using the anti-plagiarism tools integrated into e-learning from Turnitin.com. The steps include, first we have to create and define the requirements for a Turnitin assignment in the e-learning course page. Then the student submits the assignment using e-learning. Once the assignment has been submitted, the paper then is scanned by Turnitin.com and a plagiarism score is given. Then the instructor opens the scanned paper and views the plagiarized sections as well as makes comments and submits feedback and posts the grade in e-learning. To create a Turnitin assignment, we go to the course, in this case I have a temporary course, and then click on Turn Editing On. After we turn Editing On, then we scroll to the section where we want to post the assignment. We click on Add an Activity or Resource, and then under Activities, choose Turn It In Assignments. Then click on Add. Now we give a name to this assignment and this is what will be posted on the front page of the course. And then under summary we post the requirements for this assignment including the rubric that you're going to use for grading this paper. Then under the assignment type we have the choice for file upload for online submission. Usually it's going to be a file upload where the student will save the assignment in their computer and then upload it to e-learning. The number of parts, this is basically if you are requiring the students to submit multiple parts to the same assignment, usually this is going to be one. Then the file size, that should be sufficient. The overall grade, this is how you're going to grade this assignment. If it's a one-page assignment, then probably give them less points. If it's a major paper, then grade it against 100 points. Student originality reports, this is basically, will you allow the students to see the score for plagiarism once it's been determined by Turnitin after they submit their assignment? This is up to you. You can choose yes or no. The default is yes. Allow late submissions, this is uh, by default as yes. And then the report generation speed, this is how soon do you want to turn it in to grade or to give you a score for the plagiarism part? Usually this is set to immediately, then checking against student papers, all these options leave them so they get scanned. So it's going to check against peer papers or other student papers, it's going to check against the internet, it's going to check against journals, and you can choose to exclude the bibliography and the quoted material. You can also specify that if it's within certain number of words to skip those words and not mark them as plagiarized. Then we click on save and return to the course. At this point the assignment has been created in e-learning and the system is synchronizing with Turnitin. The assignment is ready for students. Now that the assignment has been created, notice that it will be posted on the front page of the course. The student or you can click on the assignment and under the summary tab it will show the requirements for the assignment it will show the start date, the due date and the post date. The post date it's when the student can see the posted grade and the posted comments on that assignment. If you want the students to see the posted grade and the posted comments earlier than the due date then you need to click on the edit icon here on the right hand side and then change the post date to today's date and then choose save. Other options are submitting papers for other students. So if the student is not submitting the paper on their own, you can upload the paper manually for specific students. And in this case, we can choose the name of the student. And then we post the title for the paper and then upload the file. and then click on Submission. Notice once the paper has been uploaded, it will show up on the name of that student 
and then under the status it's going to show as pending. That's because it takes a few minutes for Turnitin to scan the paper against all other web and journals and other resources online. This is where the status or the score is going to be posted. And this was under the submission inbox. We go back to the course here and we'll go to this assignment that I had uploaded earlier so we can see the score. We click on the assignment and then click on the submission inbox. This is an assignment that we had posted earlier and this is a plagiarism score so that means that 66 percent of this assignment has been plagiarized. Grading Turnitin papers. There are a couple ways to grade an assignment. Uh, one of the ways is to click on the actual assignment or you can go here under activities and choose Turnitin assignments. So let's uh, first go under Turnitin assignments from activities. Once we see a list of all the assignments, we click on submissions. So let's say we'll choose this one. Now, if we're going to use the assignments box, then we need to click on the actual number of submissions here on the right hand side in order to see and grade the assignment. So we'll click on number one here. And then notice there is this assignment posted by IT staff. And this is the score as determined by Turnitin for plagiarism. So this is the, ter the higher the score, the higher the chances that this paper was plagiarized. So to see what was plagiarized, we need to click on the score here. And this will take us to Turnitin.com and display all the portions of the assignment that have been plagiarized. Notice there is a brief intro here, how this works. And notice on the right hand side, we have the different resources where this paper was copied from. Notice on the top left we have the originality. This is the actual score that tells us what was plagiarized and from where. And if we click on each of these sections, notice it displays the portions exactly online where it was copied from and what part of it was copied. This was from this other website. And notice number three, this is from another paper online. So basically the originality checks checks against resources on the internet, journals, and other student submitted papers worldwide. Now the next thing that we can do here is that we can make comments directly on the paper and the student will access those comments later after the grade has been posted. So to do that, we need to click on grade mark. Once we click on grade mark, at this point, notice that we, we have the actual student paper. And we also have different areas here on the right hand side where we can make different comments. And we can um, insert predefined comments, either by the system or you can create your own as well. So let's say in here we wanted to insert a comment. And if you can also save this as a new quick mark so that you can reuse it for other students. And then choose save. Notice that will show up here in the right hand side so that you can reuse it as you go. Note you can move these around where you need to post them. And note as well that there are different other options here on the top right hand side as well. So you'd make all the comments throughout the assignment and then notice if you want to insert feedback as well you can click on this right hand this little button here on the second one on the right and you can also insert voice comments for up to three minutes in the student paper. Once you have reviewed the paper and made comments in it you can also post the grade here the right hand side. However, this is only if the student goes online through turnitin.com that can view, that they can view that score. When you're done with this, you need to go back to e-learning and post the grade from there that I'll show in a second. So once we are done with all this, we click on close on the top right side, leave the page, and then the systems are going to synchronize between e-learning and turnitin. 
and then to enter the grade we need to click on the little pen here and then post the grade for the student make sure it is very important that you click this check mark otherwise it does not save the grade that you have submitted for the student if you want to leave additional comments for the student you can click on this area here where it says comments and feedback and post additional comments and that is the whole process for creating and checking this plagiarism score and making comments on a student paper. So if we wanted to go back and grade another student's paper, we'd go back to the submission inbox and then pick another student's paper that might have been uploaded. Again, there will be cases where a student may not be able to see their feedback and the reason for that is because the post date might not be available. And finally, what does it look like for the student for them to view the feedback from an assignment? So let's say this is a student's account and we click, uh, the student will click on their course. They'll scroll down here under the assignment that they have submitted. Then they'll need to click on My Submissions. And by the way, this uh, tutorial will be available for students as well, customized for just students. And under submissions, the students will be able to see the similarity the score by determined by Turnitin, the grade posted for their assignment, and then, however, if they want to see additional comments on their paper that you posted online, they'll need to click on the paper that they have submitted. This will take the student to Turnitin without them having to log in, and this is their submitted paper and then they'll need to click on grade mark. Under grade mark, this is where the comments will be displayed. Comments that we entered earlier. And they'll see the score that you posted as well on the top. And that's it. So, so far we worked a little bit with the course design here with uh, the heading, the syllabus, the course description, the attendance, then posting various resources. Now we are going to get into uh, posting activities, assignments for the students, uh, things that they all do so that you can grade and assess their understanding of the subject. So we're going to click on uh, to add an assignment, we're going to click on add an activity. And there are two types of assignments at this point. The recent upgrade, this was uh, simplified to some extent, or quite a bit. And most of the functions for an assignment, traditional assignment, as we are used to, they are going to be under the assignment option here in the top. And now recently, we also integrated a Turnitin assignment, which is a tool for detecting plagiarism in assignments. The first option here, it does not check for plagiarism. The second, it does. So I'm going to cover them both here in our... So we're going to click on Assignment. And you notice there's a pretty lengthy description. as what it does and how it works. Then we're going to click on Add. So let's assume this is an assignment to, to write a five-page paper on business intelligence. And by the way, business intelligence, it's one of those hot topics nowadays in computer technology in uh, making decisions uh, by using collected data and having a computer analyze the data and uh, give you ideas as to what the best decision is to take in a business environment. So uh, let's say five page paper. So once we give it a name, then we need to post a description. The description is basically the guidelines and the requirements for this paper. I'd recommend that you specify how to save the paper, what file format, for example, first name underscore last name, and then the title of the paper. Then you specify here the dates when they can submit the paper and when the paper is due. Notice you can enable and disable those, it depends on how you want, but it's best that uh, if you're going to use the due dates and stick by them, it, they need to be accurate, especially if you're importing a course for previous semesters. The due date needs to be up to date, 
uh, as the students get really frustrated when an assignment is not even due yet and it says it's 450 some days uh, past due then always show description you can leave that uh, available or alone uh, prevent late submissions leave that to no because otherwise if you you can prevent them but yet if you do prevent them then the students will try to email you those late assignments require the students to click on submit but uh, one less thing for students to do notify the graders about submissions this is like if you want to receive emails from students that the paper has been submitted and then notify graders about late submissions out in that way you'll get an email when a student submits something late the rest here uh, submission settings online text by default this is no it's best to just have the students upload a file rather than typing stuff online because of timeout issues or disconnections or things of that nature if you're going to use the online text option make sure that you ask the students to save it first in their computer and then copy and paste it into online uh, file submissions yes uh, that means that the students are going to submit it electronically and then number of files uh, usually it is one however you might have uh, cases where you need more than one file uploaded and this is where you change it submission comments um, basically this is um, if you want the students to submit any comments for you so usually it is no feedback settings you're going to provide feedback comments and then feedback files as well and then under the grade this is how you're going to grade this particular assignment it's recommended that for longer assignments you give them more points and for uh, one page or so let's say 20 points or 10 points depending on how major the paper is the grading method it's going to be graded uh, using against these points that's a simple way of doing it you can have a marking guide or a rubric that at some point we'll get to talk more about it the grade category this is where that step that we discussed earlier on creating the categories in the grade book comes in helpful so under the grade category what it's saying is that this paper what category does this fall under as stated in the syllabus so we created the categories earlier and now this would be for example under projects or if you had the thing called papers so let's say I put it under projects notice these are the categories that we created earlier and then just click on save and return to the course at this point the paper has been configured and it is available for students to let's turn editing back on here it's available for students to post and respond to it I would recommend that uh, you probably have them separated the papers from um, so you could indent this twice and further here or you could have a set or a section here or a label called assignments and then up here lectures so to do that just in case you wanted to you click on add an activity you choose a label and then we could have here something like this it's called a label and then by the way you can drag this up and down within the course if you wanted to you can also duplicate this so that you can make one for lectures And then bring this up here and then change it to the word lecture resources or something like that so you have lectures and you have assignments we'll bring that down one and this is how it will look if we turn editing off this is how it will look so far for September 3rd we have a summary then we have the lecture resources then we have the assignments here in the bottom so that should cover how to create a regular assignment
Next here we're going to learn how to grade a submitted student paper. So um, we posted an assignment here for a five-page paper on business intelligence. There are a couple of ways of getting to the papers. So one of the ways is uh, either click on here and under activities and then choose the uh, under submissions you'd click on the actual paper. That's one way. The other way is uh, you can go to the assignment itself and then it'll show the paper the uh, way you designed it earlier or configured it earlier. And then further down here under grading, it tells you how many participants are in the course, how many papers have been submitted. So you can click here under view grade or grade all submissions. So you can click on that. And at this point, notice that it shows that uh, one paper was submitted on May 30th. If the student submitted it late, then it'll tell you how late, how much later it was submitted in red. Now, to grade this paper, all you need to do is you click on the check mark where it says grade here, and then it'll display all the options for this specific student. So now, here's the file that was submitted by the student. This is the area where we can put in the grade, the comments, and then also the feedback files back to the students. So what we need to do, since the file was submitted electronically, and this is where we are moving at this point at uh, Cairn, we are going to grade this electronically using Microsoft Word. So that's why it is important when you define your paper requirements to specify that the student needs to put also their name and then the title of the paper. So we'll click on the student's paper. We'll choose to download it. In a moment here. I'm going to save it under downloads. Actually, we'll create a new folder here, papers. Then save it. Once we save it, we are going to open it up. And then in Microsoft Word, we're going to click on enable editing. Under enable editing, then we are going to use comments in Microsoft Word. So we're going to click on um, review and then we're going to choose the option for new comment. So for example right there we want to specify that the box number is missing or um, right here we want to specify or you can highlight and make specific comments to it. On the very top you specify the grade And then, one, um, so you'd go throughout the paper and make comments uh, for the student here. One thing that I suggest, suggest is that you can choose this new comment option and right click on it and choose add to quick access toolbar. That puts it up here, so it's always up uh, on the very top left corner of Microsoft Word. In that way, you don't have to find it under review and choose that option, just an option. So now, once we are done with the student paper, we click on save and close it and then we determined that the student's grade was going to be 70 out of 100. Then under comments we could say see attached feedback file and then in here we could drag and drop the file or you can choose an add choose the file and then we said it was under downloads and we said it was under papers. There's Hubert Sims. Upload it and save and show the next. So this is probably what's the best is that you go from student, all the papers have been submitted. You're grading one student at a time. So you're choosing save and show the next student. Now in my case here, I don't have another submitted paper for demonstration purposes, but that's what you if you're grading this for real. Another option is uh, for grading is uh, if you go under the assignment itself and you go under view or grade submissions, you can also choose under up here on the top left, you can choose to download all the submissions, all the student papers. So you download all the student papers and then it's going to put them in a zip file 
once you download them you'll need to extract all of these files in a specific folder so you're downloading for 50 students or 40 students whatever it is and then you can grade all the student papers all together and then upload the feedback and upload the uh, response files later in e-learning by going and following that procedure that I just showed a moment ago so that's how you grade the paper click on the paper open it up download it make comments in Word save it give them the grade post the feedback and upload the files Another powerful tool in e-learning, and particularly for online and hybrid courses, is the use of forums. Forums can be configured even for regular classes in order to engage the students to discuss and research a topic and discuss it among themselves outside of the classroom. So to configure a forum, we need to click on Add an Activity or Resource, and then under Activities, we choose forum then click on add and then we put in a forum name under the forum discussion there are two ways of doing this uh, you can um, in the introduction you can have a case study or a scenario that you want the students to discuss and then the students start their own discussions right below this scenario that you have posted the other way of doing it is um, you just state here that all students need to participate and then the students have to answer your questions and then interact with other students in the course. So here is option one or actually this is option two where you post the questions and the students have to interact and answer them. Then you can leave all the other options here alone. Under the grade you can choose so then at this point we specify the grade category so it depends what the category would be here for example class assignments and then if you choose to grade each response from the students and I'd recommend that you specify something so that uh, it makes the students participate in those questions and those discussions then under the aggregate type you choose the average of ratings and then you can choose a different scale here so you can specify so every time a student submits a response you could mark it complete versus incomplete or you could have a scale of one through five and then you'd scroll down and then choose save and display so so far we just have created the shell we are basically saying that there is going to be a discussion for this week and uh, we need everybody to participate however we have not specified what the topics are going to be for the discussion as the instructor you can click on add a new discussion topic and then under subject this is where you put in the title of your topic that you want the class to discuss so you could have a discussion similar to this once you have specified the subject and the message or the requirements for this discussion then you could also upload the file if you have a diagram or you have some kind of uh, further explanation as far as this discussion is concerned then you click on post to the forum and then at this point an email will be sent to all the class participants as well as posted here on the course page so um, the students at this point they will come so this is how it will show up in the course page there will be an entry for should you cite Wikipedia on your papers it will be a class discussion I'm gonna move this to the right a little bit and then the students will click on it and they'll see something like this all students should participate in the discussions below and they'll have your question once you click on the student will click on the question and then this is where they'll press reply the only option for them will be the reply option so once they press reply then they'll have something very similar to this where they can post their response they also have the capability to upload files so the key to using forums is going to be to get the students engaged 
in discussing and researching more resources beyond the actual classroom. And the key as well is to get the students to interact with one another. So the students would go back and forth and uh, comment and discuss a specific topic. You can add in the discussion here, you can add more than one question for each specific week. So if we go back under the list of questions, you can add another discussion topic. And in the case of online and hybrid courses for distance learning here at uh, Cairn University, we need to make sure that we use this component so that we can have regular and substantive interaction between the students and the instructor in the course. This is a very key component. So that's how it's done as far as the forums in the course. Another key tool in e-learning is the use of quizzes. Quizzes can be configured so that the students will take them either in the classroom or outside of the classroom and the quizzes can be timed for true and false, multiple choice and uh, similar questions. The quizzes can be graded automatically by the system and the student will receive a grade as soon as they press submit. You can also incorporate essay questions and you can grade those questions separately. So to configure a quiz in e-learning, what you need to do is you go into the course, you turn editing on, and you know that you have turned editing on by uh, making sure that you have all these little icons. And you can turn editing on under settings as well. Let's go to the course or that section where you want to create a quiz, click on add an activity, and then choose quiz. Under the quiz, click on add, and then give the quiz a name. You can specify an introduction. This would be basically what you're going to cover in this quiz and when it will be available and uh, further details. As far as the timing for the quiz, you can specify that um, the quiz will open at a specific time. For example, let's say your class meets at uh, 6.30 p.m. That's when it will open. You can also close the quiz automatically at a certain, uh, a certain time. So let's say uh, you want to close it at 9 p.m specify that it closes on July 30th at 9 p.m. You can uh, enable a time limit in it so the student will have only 10 minutes to take the quiz and then the, as far as the attempts uh, they you can choose one of those options this is the default that attempts must be submitted before the time expires basically they have to complete everything before their time expires under the grade category, you specify what category this falls under. Let's say quizzes. How many attempts? I would recommend you use one attempt uh, depending on your style and what you're trying to achieve and utilize the quiz for. You can allow more than one attempt. However, you might want to specify as well how much time between the attempts the students will have are allowed. And also, um, when you give them more than one attempt, it creates uh, more of a case for plagiarism or copying each other's answers and that type of thing. But it depends on what you're trying and how you're doing this. Under the layout, uh, you can specify to randomly shuffle the questions. And then as far as new pages, you can have all the questions in one page. My recommendation would be that for every question, they would have to click on next. They complete one question, then they move on to the next and so on. Shuffle within the questions. This is in the case of a lab and uh, you don't want the students to look at each other's screen. What might be the correct answer? A for one student. It may not be the same answer for other students. The, as far as the review options, immediately after the attempt, or uh, if you're giving the students more than one attempt to take a quiz, then probably you want to turn off the feedback immediately after the attempt. In that way, they can't see what one was the wrong or the right answer so that the other student can copy from it. But if you're giving them only one chance, and if that is the only class taking this quiz, then you, choose, you leave those options the way they are. And as far as other options here, um, 
you can use browser security as well where students would not be allowed to copy and paste however for some browsers this causes issues so if you're having trouble with your quizzes make sure the browser security is set to none the disadvantage of that is uh, that then the students are allowed to copy and paste and switch between the browsers and that type of thing there are other options here as well they're not uh, that key and at this point we are already basically we're saying this so far that we are going to have a quiz it's going to be on this date and the quiz is going to have this specific criteria however we have not defined as to what questions will be in the quiz so at this point we are going to go and click on save and display so they can work and build this quiz even further and then we are going to click here on edit quiz once we click on uh, edit quiz at this time we need to actually add questions to this quiz so the question bank contents so we need to click on question bank content uh, here if we had a question bank or we could just simply click on add a question and then we'll create our questions so most common ones are the true and false so we'll click on true and false click on next so the question name is the identifiable names uh, that will show for you to, when you pick the questions the question text is what the student will see so you can actually copy and paste it in here under the question text the correct answer in this case so you're saying the, the bible is god's word so uh, the correct answer is true and then you can have also general feedback no matter how they answer it you can have general feedback if they answer true you could specify further feedback for the student and if they choose false then you can have feedback regarding that as well so basically the students are learning from the feedback when they press submit so uh, click on save changes so that's one question that we are adding Another type of question that we can insert here in our quiz is a multiple choice question and click on add question then click on next we are going to enter our question so we'll make it a simple question here here in university is located in so we can have default feedback here for any type of question no matter how the answer the student answers it only one question answer is going to be allowed and the choices are going to be a b c d so choice one would be in europe so they get no points for this then uh, choice two would be alabama they get no points for this either choice three would be langhorn or just pennsylvania and choice and uh, for this one they'll get a hundred percent if they choose this answer and then let's say they get no points for that scroll down and choose save changes so at this point we have only two questions you can also click on uh, show here under the question bank and if you have other questions that you have imported for example from other uh, textbooks and so on or you're building a, a test bank you can choose to add more questions and reuse the same questions that you have in your question bank and add them to specific quizzes but for now for demonstration purposes we're going to have only two questions and then notice that the maximum grade is going to be a hundred and each question it has equal value you can specify a different value for different questions so uh, let's say we give this um, 30 for this one 70 for that one you can reorder it from here and then once you have defined your quiz then you can click on preview to see how the quiz will look for the student and this is how the student um, the quiz will look then uh, they'll answer next this is how the second question will show up and then 
this is how much time it will tell the students that they have left on the questions and if they are ready to go and submit it they'll click on submit all and finish and the quiz will display in the course page just like another item right here so that's how briefly how you configure a quiz in e-learning Another activity that you can utilize in e-learning is the web conferencing option. This is uh, using another integrated module called Big Blue Button. This, it's designed to be very simple, just like pushing a Big Blue Button for the instructor. To create a web conference for your courses, and this, is, can, be, this can be primarily used in uh, hybrid and distance learning courses, as well as regular courses or web enhanced courses. To create a web conference session, you can click on Add an Activity or Resource, and then choose Big Blue Button. Then click on Add, and then we need to specify the classroom name, the virtual classroom name. So let's say Week 1. This module allows uh, all the students in the course, including the instructor, to interact live with web cameras, microphones, or whiteboard, as well as uh, live chat. The instructor also has the capability to view or to make a student a presenter and uh, interact so that the students can uh, leave the discussion at certain points. You can choose to open the big blue, big blue button in a new window and then you can schedule this so it opens and closes at a specific time. Then you can choose to record it. We have to figure out the recording at this point. I've not really tested it. But then you'd click on save and return to the course. So at this point we just have created the web conference and we need to make sure that when we specify the time we need to be online so that the students would be able to get in the conference room. At this point the student and you as instructor you'll click on the web conference option and you log in automatically everything is integrated and it will ask you to allow the microphone and camera access so you need to allow the access to it Either right now I'm going to click on the deny for the sake of testing here otherwise it'll be too noisy with all the mic on the left hand side you'll have the list of users this is the list of all the listeners in the course this is where the videos uh, the little pictures of videos of all the students will be displayed then in here in the middle section this is where you uh, this is your whiteboard and you can upload the presentation from this button right here Let's upload the presentation let's say I want to upload this paper discuss it with the rest of the class it can be a PowerPoint any type of file and then on the right hand side this is where the class live chat will be taking place on the top left this is where you can share your microphone this is how you engage the microphone for the class the next icon to the left you can share your own camera and it's exactly the same view that the students will have on their side the next icon here is to share the whole desktop if you're going to use this quite a bit the best is to have another computer or laptop next to you and on one computer you're broadcasting on the other one you're seeing as to what the students are seeing on their end there is the option here for zooming in to the document that you are presenting to the students there's also this option for show the whiteboard and you can use different colors here to annotate and discuss things and you're explaining concepts to the students remotely while well, at the same time chatting live with them from this window i have a different tutorial on this as well uh, more detailed and more in depth but this is the idea about this and uh, i'll have a link for that on the detailed e-learning guides and tutorials on the 
faculty resources block. So this is for live courses, live interaction. It's not necessarily used to lecture for hours. It's intended to, to be used for brief discussions and a brief uh, explanation of the concept and also bring together the class, especially if you're doing distance learning. So that's the web conferencing. Another important component in e-learning is the ability to reuse content from previously taught courses. So the question is, how do we import content that we have previously taught into an existing new course? So what we need to do is we need to first go to the new course that we are teaching. Let's, let's assume that this is the new course. Let's assume this is blank at this point. And now we want to import content from a previous course. So we need to click on import. And then notice it will say to find the course. So you need to be in the course that you want to import the data first. Then uh, if the course does not show up in this list, then you need to search by the course code, which is basically BIB, let's say, or uh, BUS, the course code 111. It's a three letters and the three numbers with an underscore. So then we go under, let's say, spring 2012, and then we click on continue so we pick the course that we want to pick and then we can include the different activities different blocks and additional stuff so we'd leave that basically the way it is then we click on next and then here we can uncheck items that we don't want to import for example the course syllabus we don't need the old course syllabus to be brought over Let's say we don't want anything from topic number one. The reason for that is because we already have stuff in topic number one. In your case, you want to keep that to bring the same thing from topic number one. Now, this is a course with a lot of assignments and a lot of items in it. So you just click on next here and then scroll down. These are all the items that will be imported and now perform import. Depending on the, the size of the content that you have in the previous course, it may take a, a minute or so to perform the import. But it should bring everything that you had in the previously caught, uh, taught course without the student assignments and the student names. Once the import is complete, you'll receive a message similar to this. You'll click on continue and then we should be able to see the content that was imported from the previous course. Now, of course, it needs to be cleaned up and the due dates for particular assignments, they need to be updated. It is very important that the due dates are updated. So in our case, we need to turn editing on. You have to go throughout the course and change the due dates. So for example, homework here you need to click on edit or update and then change the due date to the appropriate one so that's very important when you're importing content from an old course so that's the importing function. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover the e-learning gradebook. Basically, as you create assignments throughout the semester, those assignments can be papers, turn it in papers, can be forum discussions, they can be quizzes, any of those types of assignments as you grade them and you publish the grades for the students or assign the grades to the students, those grades get populated in the gradebook. So to get to the gradebook, you go under settings here and then click on grades. Once you get to the gradebook, this is the default view. So you'll have a listing of all the students in the course, their email address, and then all the different assignments along with the grade for that specific student. So if you wanted to see specific grades just for a particular student, uh, you can simply click on this icon here 
and it will display the grade for that particular student. So in a course, the first thing you need to do is the creation of the categories and items. The categories and items, I explained this earlier in the tutorial, so for more details on creating the categories and items, you need to go earlier in the tutorial and check that part of it. You need to make sure that the course, if you're using different sets of categories, for example, you have quizzes and there are six quizzes in the course, then there are papers and they have three or four papers. You have another category called uh, home assignments. All of those can be calculated accordingly in the gradebook. But the key is that the top of the course here needs to be set to weighted mean of grades. And then the subcategories, it's best to set it as simple weighted mean of grades and then you assign the score. So for example here quizzes and class assignments it's 25 percent of the final grade. Same thing for home assignments for example it's 25 percent of the grade. To create a new category just in case you want to do this quickly we click on add category in the bottom and again you base this from your syllabus you give it a category name and then under the aggregation make sure you choose simple weighted mean of grades because this is a subcategory of the course. If you wanted to drop anything like as far as quizzes, the lowest quiz or something, this is where you, you drop it and then you click on save changes. Now once you create, and I'm not going to go through all the categories here because there's that other part of the tutorial to do this, once you have created the category and for now ignore all of these different assignments Notice you have presentations created. This is where you state what's the percentage of this category. So let's say it is 25%. This means 25% of the final grade. You may choose also to put here 25 on this number next to the category total. What that means is that the student, when they score 23.1, that means they score 23.1 out of 25, the total maximum or you can leave it as a hundred, it doesn't matter, it's still going to consider it against a hundred percent. But the total number of the category amounts should add up to a hundred for the whole course here. And then you'd make sure you choose save changes. Once you have saved the changes, then you'll go to the course, or it'll take you to this view to see all the grades in the course. The next thing you might want to do is set the grade letters. So under letters here, this is the default university wide. So 93 to 100 is an A, and 90 to 93 it's an A minus, and so on. If you want to change the scale, you click on edit, grade letters, and then specify your own scale. And you need to make sure you override it first and then you specify the different boundaries for each grade letter. So I'll go back here and of course you choose save changes if you're doing this for real. The next uh, thing that you might want to do in the course is under settings here. You may want to choose the grade letter along with the score that the student scored in a quiz or an assignment or in a paper and that would be but just like here we have 10, 10 is an A or uh, this next one they scored 8 out of 10 therefore they got a B minus. So to change the settings so it displays both the letter and the score, the actual number, we go under settings and then under grade here, under grade item settings, under the grade type we choose letter and real so it's going to display the uh, letter grade based on the criteria that we determined earlier under letters along with the real score that they scored in that assignment. So once you make that change you will click on save changes and then it will take you back to your course. Once the categories have been set up correctly and the scores and everything has been set up correctly Notice that for the course total, everything gets calculated automatically in the course. Now, at the end of the semester, it is highly recommended that you also export those grades to Excel so that you 
have a copy of those grades. I'd also recommend that you might even export those grades every so often throughout the semester after you have uploaded or posted the grades for a major assignment just in case something happens. We do backups of e-learning, however it's best to have a copy of it. Also for accreditation purposes, it is highly recommended that you copy or you export those grades at the end of every course and store those the Excel file in your J drive or somewhere on the network. So to do that we click under export we are still under the gradebook and then in here you can choose to export the feedback as well and you can choose at least the real grades and then possibly the letter grade. Unfortunately at this point you need to do this twice once for the real grade and then the other one for the actual uh, grade letter. So then it's going to, these are all the assignments it's going to pick and then we click on submit. Once you click on submit then uh, it will come up with a listing of what it's going to download here. You'll click on download and then this is going to be, it's going to ask you where do you want to save this. Put in a folder, give it a name and click on save. Once the grades have been downloaded, at this point you can choose File, Save As, and save this somewhere on the network. And that should do it. Those are some of the different aspects of the gradebook. Keep in mind, again, that um, all the grades are generated from the assignments that you create on the main course page. As you post those grades for each assignment, then the gradebook is populated. Keep also in mind that you need to define the categories and items and those are defined using the process that we described earlier in the, in the tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free and contact me at escoselli at Thank you.